Hi guys, uh, Patek here. Today's video will be uh, a book review for Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erikson. And some of you probably know already that I am a huge fan of Malazan Book of the Fallen. I have always wanted to read it this series for a very long time now, and it's been almost three years. It's been almost three years since I first read through the series, and I thought this is the right time for me to finally start uh, reading through it again, because I've heard from a lot of people that this series even gets better on reread. And you know what? Just from rereading Gardens of the Moon, I can already kind of confirm that this is truly the case. And I figured I might as well do a book to review for each book that I managed to reread in the series. I'm currently thinking of going through Malazan Book of the Fallen, uh, one book per month right now, so my reread of Dead House Gates will be next month, but we'll see. And so yeah, let's get started. So Gardens of the Moon, Malazan Book of the Fallen, if you have heard about this series, you probably uh, have heard about how dense, how complex, how intricate, and how difficult it can be to read through the series. These claims are mostly correct. It is not an easy series and I definitely won't recommend this for any newcomer to adult fantasy. Even for expert in adult fantasy and epic fantasy, this can still be a difficult series to get into. But there's one thing to remember that it is also not as uh, insane as some of you may think. So Gardens of the Moon is the first book in Malazan Book of the Fallen. It is uh, the first out of 10 books, and there is still other series like Malazan Empire by Ian Esselman, and then there is also Karkana's Trilogy by Steven Erickson, and there is also the Path to Ascendancy Trilogy by Ian Esselman again. But I won't get into those right now, this is just about Gardens of the Moon. Empress Lassine rules the Malazan Empire with an iron fist. After laying seeds to pale, she set her gaze upon Darujistan, the last free city of Genebakis. But it would appear that the empire is not alone. Sinister shadowbound forces are gathering, and when the gods meddle, the humans tremble. That's pretty much all I can say regarding the premise of this book. And for the rest of my review throughout the series, it will most likely be something similar like this. I will only be mentioning about the premise as best as I can, without any spoilers. Malazan Book of the Fallen is a grand tale. It is a massive series, and Gardens of the Moon is merely an appetizer for everything to come in the series. There is no benign compromise from Steven Erikson. Even with that being said, Gardens of the Moon is actually the easiest book to get into in the series. Readers are immediately put into a gigantic war when you start reading Gardens of the Moon. It is that crazy. There is no explicit backgrounds of what's going on being given, so it can be quite difficult if this is your first time going through it. And that's okay, that's just how it is. One thing that you have to remember with reading Malas and Book of the Fallen, and I think this situation applies to every book in the series, is that you kinda have to trust even Erickson and be okay with getting lost in some things. But even if you don't understand some things, was the story itself hard to follow? Obviously this will be relative, but in my opinion, Gardens of the Moon isn't incomprehensible. The main plot is still understandable. You will be able to understand uh, the main story of what's going on. Now, I don't claim to understand everything that I've read in this book. Even on reread, there are still some things that I don't understand. There are a lot of things that will be understandable only with the power of hindsight. Once you've read more of the books in the series, you will understand a lot of things, so much things that you don't understand at the moment. This is the same case with Gardens of the Moon. On this reread, I was completely shocked. Because wow, it was like reading a different book. Some things just won't make sense yet, and that's okay, you're not stupid. That's just how it is with this series. You will not be able to understand everything on the first read. But there's still a lot of things to love in Gardens of the Moon despite the confusing things. For example, the themes. I just love some of the themes that Erickson implemented into the book. Uh, some of the most noticeable ones being that the constant decrease in humanity as they uh, constantly engage in war. And the other theme is that when gods meddled, humans became pawns in their supremacy. When you open Gardens of the Moon, you will immediately encounter a huge number of characters in the Dramatis persona. That will give you an idea just how big the scope of this book and series is. There were more than 10 POVs characters followed, there were more than 100 names to remember, just within this book alone. But this is also where Erickson deserves a lot of praises, because despite so many characters, I think I personally found them to be so noticeable. One character in particular doesn't even have a main POV chapter, and he became, just within this book alone, he became one of my favorite characters immediately. You know what I'm talking about if you've read this book. It is the main of chaos, the lord of the Tiste Andi, the wielder of Draknipur, Anomander Rake. It suffice to say that he instantly made it to one of the coolest fictional characters I've come so far. And speaking of characters, uh, 
a lot of the characters name in this series are very memorable sometimes quite ridiculous i mean just in this book alone there's characters named whiskey jack quick ben uh, sorry <laughs> and then there is talk the younger talk the older how did erickson and asselman came up with these names that's my thought the first time i read through it but now these names aren't just merely names anymore now on my reread every time this character's name were mentioned there is something just so different now because a lot of things happen to these characters for the rest of the series a lot of things and when it comes to world building i don't even know where to begin it's intricately complex and it's truly epic in scope just this book alone it has already shown that that gardens of the moon is already bigger than some trilogy just gardens of the moon and remember what i said that this is the easiest book to get into and this is the smallest book in the series hundreds of thousands of histories there are many races there's a deadly and mysterious magic there's also the deck of dragons there's the ascendance there's just so much information to absorb here and if you're not a fan of detailed and uh, complex world building then i think you will have quite a difficult time reading through malazan book of the fallen let's take a look at this image this is one of the action scenes in this book and this is just to give you an idea just how massive in scope the battle was. This picture is Gardens of the Moon illustrated by Mark Simonetti, one of my favorite cover artists, and the scene depicts the Siege of Pill, which happened in Chapter 2. That's right, sorcerer's conflagrations, a floating fortress, giant ravens. The second chapter of this book could have easily be compared to the final battle in any other standard fantasy trilogy. Here's another artwork on what kind of imminent battle and destruction to expect here. This one is illustrated by Michael Cormack. I cannot uh, tell you what's going on here because it would be a spoiler, but looking at it, you probably won't understand what's going on if you haven't read through the book. But you can probably already imagine just how epic this is just from these two images. I love Gardens of the Moon. It is not the best book in the series, and that's okay, because with all this ambition and scope, there is some plotline in the book that didn't really click with me. It is the Assassin War. And my investment in the characters kind of differs because I care so much about Paran, Tool, Tethersail, the Bridge Burners, and Anoman the Rake. But there are other characters in Gardens of the Moon that I didn't care yet. Like, uh, for example, Kalam. I didn't care about Kalam yet in Gardens of the Moon on my first read. Of course, it's a different experience on reread. And some of the epic battle scenes kind of concluded too quickly uh, to my liking in this book. But again, as I said, this is just for Gardens of the Moon. So I will conclude this review by giving advice to first timer to the series. There is a good chance that the fandom, the size of the series, the complexities have pushed you off from reading through the series. And that's okay, I totally understand. It was the same case for me. And even if you're an epic fantasy fan, I will not lie, there is a chance this book won't work for you. It's a massive tale, it requires a lot of commitment, especially if you're reading through all the books in the Malazan world, which I haven't done yet. I've read only two books in the Malazan Empire and all the Malazan Book of the Fallen and also Karkana's trilogy. I haven't read Path to Ascendancy, I haven't read the rest of the Malazan Empire series. But there is one thing to remember, that Gardens of the Moon means you're starting one of the most rewarding series uh, in existence right now. When I finished The Crippled God, the final book in the series, I was just in a massive book hangover. The post-series hangover was insane. It was insane. It was that rewarding to me. And there are a lot of books in the series that gave me that kind of satisfaction. If you're ready to plunge into Stephen Erickson and Ian Asselman's uh, ambitious tale, Gardens of the Moon will be the first avenue to test your imagination to its limit. I highly encourage you to at least try it because this is one of my favorite series of all time. If you have enjoyed Gardens of the Moon, then I guarantee you that the rest of the series will blow your mind away. And that's the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you have read this book or not. Or maybe are you on your reread right now? And if you haven't read Gardens of the Moon, are you planning to read it one day? That's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.